Okay, so what I wanted to show you in this video real quick is this modified spoon mule. And basically all I've done is, this is a picnic table out beside my shed. And I've got a wood clamp that's clamped to the table with just a C-clamp. And this wood clamp becomes my spoon mule. And I can lay my spoon in there and lock that thing down good and tight. And then even though I'm left-handed, I can come in here and use a right-handed hook knife to work on my spoon bowls and things like that before I go back in and do all my final work with cabinet scrapers and things like that to smooth out my bowl. But this gives you a real good solid hold, especially if you're trying to use right-handed tools and you're left-handed, you can hold it with your left hand and guide it with your right. It gives you real decent push cuts around the bowl of that spoon. But it's a real cheap and easy way to make a spoon mule in your backyard. So I thought today I would just address a couple of the questions that I get quite a bit when it comes to carving work and things like that. And I've been working on this reclaimed walnut spoon today. And I do a lot of work with reclaimed lumber, especially because I have a knife shop. So we have a lot of off fall in walnut from making knife scales and things like that. And I can take those pieces and I can make usable objects like spoons and things out of them very, very easily. So I've carved a spoon already and I've done plenty of videos on how to do that. And generally, just to answer a couple other questions, I mean, I have a small tool roll that I use the majority of the time quick it's the same tool roll we saw on our website but I've got a 106 a 120 a 122 carving knife in there and the 122 is kind of a sheep's foot style knife and then the 120 is a very short carving knife and the 106 is just like the basic wood carver style blade and then I carry two hook knives in there one of them is the number 162 and the other one's a 164. And those are both fairly good hook knives and they're pretty versatile and they're inexpensive. The problem with the 164 is that it is set up to be a right-handed hook knife. So if you're left-handed like I am, you have to learn to manipulate it a little different than you would if you were going to use it right-handed. Now I can use it both right and left-handed a little bit, but I can also use it on my left hand, hold the work with my right hand and do rolling cuts with it. Or I can put it in that spoon mule I just showed you and I can hold it with my left hand and do push cuts with my right hand, which works really, really well also. And then I have just a small file brand draw knife from Switzerland. And that pretty much compromises my, or comprises, excuse me, my kit other than some type of a small hatchet and a saw to cut out blanks and things like that if I'm doing it on the fly. But blanks that are made from Reclaim are pretty easy to cut out, especially with just a saw and a knife to remove the waste um, when you cut those wedges out. And like I said, I've got videos on that out there and you can watch those videos. But the main things I wanted to go over in this video real quick was that simple spoon mule, a simple carving kit that you're not going to have a whole lot of money wrapped up into. And then I get a lot of questions about how do I seal these projects when I'm done. And I just finished the final sanding on this walnut spoon. So I thought what I'd do is I'd show you how I seal that. And what I use is just regular mineral oil that you buy right off of the internet. And this is a brand new bottle that I haven't even opened yet. So i got to punch a hole through it here. And then I just take it and I take the rag and saturate an area of the rag with that mineral oil and put a good, healthy coat on that walnut. If I can keep a hold of it. It gets kind of slippery when you're putting oil on it. But you want to apply this in several coats because you're going to want it to soak in. And it's going to soak up into the wood and dry out a little bit. So you want to put a coat on here and then you'll want to dry it out, let it soak in, and then you'll want to put another coat on there. It's very much like putting linseed oil on, a, on an axe handle or something like that. You just do it until it doesn't take any more oil, and then you'll be good to go. And mineral oil is nice and safe for everything. The next question that I get a lot on this stuff is, I make spoons and they crack. I make kooks and bowls and they crack. What can I do? Well, my best advice to you is leave it outside. 
once you carve something, now if you're using reclaimed lumber that's already gonna be dried out, like this piece of walnut was already dry, and it's harder to carve when it's dry than when it's green, but it will still turn out fine. It's just a little bit more work, and you have to learn to manipulate it a little bit different than you would if you were using some kind of green material. But at the same time, reclaimed material is easy to get a hold of, especially in exotic woods or more harder woods like this walnut. And also, you're kind of doing the environment a favor by not cutting down a green tree to practice your projects. So I like that as well. I teach a lot of students with just one by two and one by three lumber uh, from a lumber yard. That tree's already been cut down. That wood's already there, and it's already dimensionally fairly small, so you don't have to remove a lot of waste to make a spoon. And this was basically a one by two that I'd cut down from a piece of reclaimed walnut that I made this out of. So if you're using green wood, you can leave this thing outside in a shed, in a building, something like that. I just leave them in my tool shed where all my woodworking tools are stored until they dry out. And then if you bring them in the house, they won't crack. But if you take them into the house, especially if you've got central heat, central air, and things like that, that dehumidifies your house really bad, and you put this thing in the house and it's green wood, it's going to split and crack on you fairly quickly. If you're using reclaimed lumber like this, it's already been probably kiln dried or some type of a lumber yard wood it's probably not going to crack on you. You don't have to worry so much about it. So this walnut spoon, I don't have to give it a second thought. Once I get it oiled up and it's soaked in, all the oil it's gonna soak in, it's good to go and I'm not gonna have to worry about where I store this thing and it cracking. Okay guys, that was just a couple quick tips and tricks on carving spoons and things like that in general. Questions that I've been asked um, over the last several videos I've done on carving and things like that that I hadn't answered and I thought I'd just give you a quick answer and a couple quick little clips and put them together and put them out on YouTube for you today. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, and for our business. I'm Dave Canterbury with Self-Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks guys.